the Lord that we can gather today. And it's a special day because it's a baptism service as we give thanks for the candidates who are be, to be baptized and also to their family and friends who are with us. Can we just warmly uh, welcome them? Yeah. So let us together as one people stand as we worship the Lord together uh, with this song. We want to see Jesus uh, lifted high, indeed, to look to Jesus who is reigning and ruling over all. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know that He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward. Little by little we're taking ground. Every prayer a powerful weapon. Strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down. We want to see Jesus lifted high. A banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know that He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little taking ground. Every prayer a powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down and down and down. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see. We're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. Praise you, Lord, that we can gather together to worship you, to see you lifted high. And Father, even as we come today, we thank you that you were lifted high on the cross for our sin, to set us free and to liberate us. And so today, as we witness the baptism, we recognize, Lord, your victory over sin and death, and that the water that symbolizes the cleansing of our sin by all that you have done. And so we bless you for this joyful day that we can celebrate with those who are baptized. So be present with us as we worship through word and through sacrament. For we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His holy word, and to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins, and to seek His grace that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to His service. Scripture reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So can I invite you to sit or kneel this time as we confess our sins to Almighty God, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the areas in our life that need His grace and His forgiveness. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. So receive God's grace and his forgiveness. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray together the Collect for Pentecost 19. Together. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain seated for the reading by our sister Dolly. The first scripture reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 9. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 9. But understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The gospel according to John, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Glory to Christ our Savior. John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, 
and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Would you please be seated as I invite Pastor Leon to bring to us God's word this morning. Candidates who are here today to witness a significant milestone in their personal lives. Yeah, and to those of you all at home, a blessed morning. Yeah, so today's um, sermon is a very, very interesting sermon, um, and the title is called Ready for the Last Days. As most of us know, um, it is a very trying time uh, globally, and it is very apt uh, that this sermon uh, title has come up. And just want to run through an introduction about today's message. Today, when you flick the switch uh, on your television to turn on your television or the radio, or even flip through the newspapers if you still are using print media, what will greet you will always be unpleasant news most of the time. And we know that, right? Every day. Even the internet is not spared with loads of unpleasant news coming on every few minutes. You basically just be faced with a barrage of unpleasant news on every media platform. And it does not get better. Um, I remember the close of 2019, which was 10 months ago. <laughs> yeah, the close of 2019. Uh, we had Christmas over here, uh, and it was a great uh, period of celebration. You know, we thank God for 2019. And we're all so enthusiastic, looking forward into 2020. And I was, you know, there was excitement building within me, uh, personal excitement. Why? Because um, I was counting down the days uh, to the 20th of April, 2020. Uh, and the reason why I was so excited was because my wife, uh, she planned a very beautiful trip for the two of us to go to Europe, to London and to Rome. I've never been there. She has been there, but I've never been there. And, and it was my little childhood dream to go to these places. And so, um, you know, I was planning the itinerary, you know, I'm going to go and visit this place and that place and this place, and you know, all the historical church sites that I learned from uh, Bible school. And <clears throat> unfortunately, as I was surfing the internet one fine day, I remember uh, in January, I came across this very tiny news article on the internet. 
that something was brewing in Wuhan, China. Yeah, I think most of us can, can familiar, familiar ourselves with that. And so, you know, I was reading it and it says some mysterious virus is moving around the city and, you know, it was uh, taking people's lives and stuff like that. And typical, you know, typical mindset. Ah, that's China, very far away from Singapore. Things will be okay. It won't happen to us. You know, that was my, what I told myself. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was wrong. I think most of us were very shocked when we began to find out, you know, and I was reading, I was looking at the numbers, it was slowly building up. I was looking especially at UK and Italy, you know, just looking, and the numbers were just building up, and Europe was the worst hit at the very beginning. It was the epicenter uh, of the pandemic back then. And so, of course, my trip never happened, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I just couldn't travel, and all I can do is now just wait and hope that one fine day, I think many of us are hoping we can travel again, you know, and so, it is very interesting that a lot of people also begin to think, are we in the last days? This global pandemic that's hit us, is it a sign? We start to ask ourselves, and of course, we search through Scripture, and we ask God. And talking about news reports, you know, talking about the last days, I mean, if we read 2 Timothy, like how our sister just read it just now, 2 Timothy 3, especially verse 1 to 4, it too is like a bad news report. Let me read it again for you. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not looking good, not loving good, you know, treacherous, reckless, swollen, we can see lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. It's actually like a very bad report. When Paul wrote this portion of the letter to Timothy, he was warning Timothy on what was going to happen in the church in Ephesus during that period of time. To them, it was like the last days had come upon them and they had become terrible and they probably felt, they probably thought that Jesus was going to return pretty soon. Now, every single word used in these verses are so descriptive of what is currently happening in society today. Wouldn't you agree? Just look around you. It's happening. All the descriptions mentioned here can be found in various news reports, in fact, on the internet, in print media. It is the human condition of the last days. We are living in a period of human degradation. It is indeed an incredibly challenging time as it will only get worse. This morning, I want to share a few points with all of us here to help us navigate these troubled times. We need to look at what Paul wrote here in these verses and to understand that even as it was written centuries ago, these verses are still relevant to us in this day and age. Point number one, understanding the times. There were a certain group of men in the Bible that was recorded. They came from this tribe of Issachar. And Issachar was the fifth son of Jacob from Leah, and he was the overall ninth son of the patriarch. And these men, as recorded in 1 Chronicles 12.32, they understood the times that they were in. The verse says, of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, 200 chiefs and all their kinsmen under their command. Understanding the times that we're living in right now is not by just reading what is on Twitter, on Facebook, social media, or the newspapers. It is knowing what is significant among the happenings of our world. The events, movements, trends, and ideologies, and of course, worldviews. The men of Issachar didn't simply know those signs, but knew how to then live in light of them. They had a sense of what to think, how to act, and the manner in which to respond. The role their lives played in light of the moment in which they lived, they knew what they needed to do, how to respond. So they knew and they understood the times that they were living in. 
And so I think we need to understand the times that we're living in. The second point, there is a time of difficulty, for sure. Knowing the signs of the times and how then to live has to be the most pressing challenge facing anyone's life right now. There is an acceleration of evil and lawlessness across the globe. And we have the Scriptures to warn us so clearly. Jesus Himself had this to say to all of us. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have peace tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. The words of Jesus Christ already informing us. And let us take, it a, very in, let us take a look at a very interesting passage here from 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1 to 3 and 7 to 10. And just look at it for ourselves. The mentioning of this man of lawlessness. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction. Verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. It is evident right now, brothers and sisters, of what is happening in this current generation. The work of lawlessness is already in motion and many people do not seem faced about it. We need to ask ourselves the following questions in order for us to be able to be that light on a hill or the ambassador for Christ, for the rampantly lost people out there among us. We need to ask ourselves, what is the nature of the world in which we are living in right now? What are the challenges that is facing the current generation what is the status and struggle between good and evil, right and wrong? What is the direction this culture is heading towards? And what is the nature of the world's greatest crisis right now? All those words that we read in 2 Timothy 3 earlier on is derived from one key word that is also found in that same passage. Let's see if any one of you can point it out. Anyone want to give a try? Just one key word from that passage. Anybody want to guess? It starts with the letter S. Self. It's all about self. Everything that has been described in that, all those descriptive words, revolves around self. It's about I, me, and myself. Before 2 Timothy 3, Paul wrote another fantastic chapter in Romans chapter 1, verse 28 to 32. There was a very, very similar, strikingly description here. And this is what it says. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, 
disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. This passage describes a group of people, a society, if you will, who were forsaken by God and left to their own devices because they were so caught up in pleasing themselves instead of God. It's about self. Everything about me. Everything that they were seduced into was because of self-gratification. Because of their selfishness and wanting to please themselves, this group of people were on a one-way ticket into the abyss of darkness. It was the death of a society. God gave them up to the enemy. They had a chance to turn back. But alas, they chose to stay the course away from Him. There's a chilling revelation that I saw in this passage. Uh, uh, it just jumped at me. 2 Timothy, from 2 Timothy 3, the passage that was read earlier. And this one verse jumps at me. Verse 5. It says, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Wow. This verse seems to be talking about people in the church. Yeah. It can be pastors, <laughs> cell leaders, or people of influence within the church. It is frightening, scary, but true. Having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, an outward appearance of looking godly, speaking godly, and doing godly. But inward is just an empty shell. Scary. This person described here as like, as, as, as if he's far from the truth of being a true follower of Jesus Christ. Allow me to read from Acts chapter 20, verse 28 to 30. And you will see here in this passage of Paul, warning the elders in Ephesus of what was to come after his departure. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will rise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples of, after them. Again, another verse that is strikingly similar in context of how within the church will rise some leaders with their own agenda to lead people astray. So you have terrible times on the outside of the church. You have terrible times within the church. We need to stay focused on the cross of Jesus Christ. In a short while, all of us will witness a very special moment in the lives of our friends here, Eric, Jin Young, Silas, Betty, and little baby Clarissa. Each of them have been on a journey of discovery of who Jesus Christ is and what He has done for each of them. I thank God for the privilege that I've had to journey with the three men and watching them grow and learn about our faith. Their decision to be baptized was made on their own without anyone coercing them to do it. But I believe that they were impressed by the Holy Spirit to make that decision. Although they are new in their faith, they must have been able to recognize the prompting of our Lord Jesus to come forward to be baptized. I would like to ask to I'd like to bring us to the gospel that our vicar read this morning. I want to just pick up John chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. 
A stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Our brothers and sister here has made the decision on a very significant day when we're living right now in a terrible time. None of us coerce them to get baptized. And the sacrament of baptism is an external expression of an internal renewal of one's self. In fact, in our Anglican church in the Diocese of Singapore, I came across this very beautiful passage or uh, indicator from the ethos. It reads, it is an individual's union with Christ. And indicated, yeah, it is an individual's union with Christ in his death and resurrection, the forgiveness of sins and a new birth in God's family, the church. Today, they will publicly declare their union with Christ in His death. They've made that choice. The forgiveness of sins and a new birth in God's family. They will put to death the carnal self and to rise up as sons and daughters of the living God in victory. It is amazing, once again, how God had planned everything for today. Vicar never knew that today's sermon topic would coincide with the baptism service. And it's very spot on. Because indeed, we are living in the last days. And we have to win. We have to win, partner Christ in soul winning. We need to save. Not we save. We need to show them the way. The one true way. We must not be afraid to stand firm for the gospel of Jesus Christ today when we are asked this question, why are you so different, huh? Why uh, do people do this thing like that, you do like that? We need to stand and set apart, just like what our vicar preached last week, being set apart for the gospel. Today, God is reminding us through this baptism of our dear brothers and sister that He is still moving mightily. He is still in charge to bring souls into His kingdom. And that He needs us to partner Him in this mission to be ready for the last days. The last days are going to get more worse. But we have a hope. And that hope is in the living God. Many of you all have been on a journey of discovery. And you discovered Jesus Christ. And He reached out into the miry clay and pulled you out. There are many people out there who are still lost and we need to be that light on the hill. We need to be that ambassador to Jesus Christ. I will share a very short story about Jin Yang and me. I've not prepared him for this, but I'm going to share. I've known this young man for five years and he's being baptized today. For the last five years of journeying with him, I've always asked him, hey, why don't you get baptized? Huh? Just casually. No, don't see why I need to. I already believe in Jesus. Okay, but we continued to journey together. And beginning of this year, I asked him, you know, we're having a baptism service coming soon. We're planning, you know, one, one fine day we're having baptism. Yeah, I think I'm ready now. Who did that? Was it me? It's our living God. His name is Jesus Christ. God has a number on each of us and the day will come. But you all have to be that light on the hill. I have to be that light on the hill. We have to be that ambassador for Him wherever He's placed us because we must be ready for the last days. We will hear rampant reports of wickedness and lawlessness going on. But we should not be shaken. Psalm 16 verse 8, with the Lord at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. We must keep our eyes fixed on the cross of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have a hope in you. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us on the cross, that you went to the cross, you took our sins, you died for us, but you rose again and you have conquered death. And so, Lord, I pray that this morning, 
if we are still struggling in our walk with you, if we are jaded in our walk with you, oh Lord, I pray. Holy Spirit, reignite that flame within us. Draw us back to you, Lord. We pray that you will help us to always keep our eyes fixed on you. Thank you, Father, for your word this morning. May you always be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand together as we respond to the preaching of God's word by affirming our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll now have the baptism. And so, can I ask the baptism candidates to proceed to the entrance? And then, congregation, you can turn and face the baptismal font as we baptize the five candidates. So because of COVID, we are not able to immerse the candidates at the front as we normally do. But baptism, the efficacy of baptism is not determined by the amount of water, amen? But by the faith that uh, they, and for Clarissa uh, as an infant, the faith of the parents and godparents to raise her up. And so uh, you can follow the order of service in the printed sheet. Heavenly Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you give to your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. Guide and strengthen us by that same Spirit that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. So I say to those who are to be baptized and also to the parents and godparents for Clarissa, our Lord Jesus Christ suffered death on the cross and rose again from the dead for the salvation of mankind. Baptism is the outward sign by which we receive for ourselves what He has done for us. We are united with Him in His death. We are granted the forgiveness of sins we are raised with Christ to new life in the Spirit. Those of you who have come for baptism must now affirm your allegiance to Christ and your rejection of all that is evil. So to you who are to be baptized, to the parents and godparents of Clarissa, I ask these questions. And so please respond loudly and the congregation can respond together as well. Do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce the devil and all his works, the empty show and glory of the world, with all covetous desires of it and the carnal desires of the flesh, so that you will not follow nor be led by them? May God Almighty deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Yes. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse and revive us. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. We thank you that through the deep waters of death, you brought your Son and raised him to life in triumph. 
we pray that your servants who are washed in this may be made one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to bring them to new birth in the family of your church and raise them with Christ to full and eternal life. For all glory, majesty, authority, and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. So to those who are to be baptized, you must now declare before God and His church the Christian faith into which you are to be baptized and in which you will live and grow. And to the parents and godparents of Clarissa, you must now declare before God and His church the Christian faith into which Clarissa is to be baptized and in which you will help her to live and grow. You must answer for yourselves and for Clarissa. So I ask these questions as you respond to the Lord. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? Do you believe and trust in God the Son, Jesus Christ, as your only Savior and Lord? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, the giver of life? This is the faith of the church. Our faith. We believe and trust in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, we'll begin now with Clarissa. Okay, Clarissa Ong Chi En. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I sign you with the cross, the sign of Christ. Amen. Okay. Okay, next we have uh, Betty. Betty Aniza Lee, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I sign you with the cross, the sign of Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, next we have Jin Yang. Ho Jin Yang, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I sign you with the cross, the sign of Christ. Amen. Amen. Silas Kirsch Philip, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. I sign you with the cross, the sign of Christ. Amen. <laughs> Lastly, we have Eric. Eric Lai Chi Kyung. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I sign you with the cross, the sign of Christ. Amen. Continue on page four, as I give them this charge. Remember Paul charged Timothy, and Timothy charges. So this is the charge for them on their baptism. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, and continue his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your life. So on this, in their baptism, I'll give them a lighted candle. Receive this light. Where is Clarissa? Oh, okay. You give her a candle. Give her, give her the candle. Yeah. So this is the godmother for Clarissa. Okay. 
Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men. Glory be to God the Father. So now we have a gift for each one of them. You take this. This for who? This for Betty, Silas, Jin Yang, Eric. Okay, the final, uh, as we welcome them, baptism, they are baptized into Christ. They also baptize into the body of Christ, into the local community of faith. So do please uphold them, pray for them, and also for our new self, pastor, not so new now, uh, to incorporate uh, them into cell groups that they may grow and be nurtured to be like Christ, more and more like Christ. And so let us welcome them with joy but also with a sense of accountability for them. God has received you by baptism into His church. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We are members together of the body of Christ. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We are inheritors together of the kingdom of God. We welcome you. <laughs> okay. We'll proceed back and we will continue in song, in worship, with this song, Beneath the Waters. So you can face the, the front as they proceed back to their seats. So remain standing as we uh, join together with this song, Beneath the Waters. Seated as I invite our brother Arul to lead us in a time of uh, intercession as we look to the Lord for him to hear us and to especially also to, to pray for the baptism uh, candidates that they would grow in the knowledge and fear of the Lord.
Our gracious Heavenly Father, friend and elder brother, we thank you that you are always available to hear us and never turn away from us in our hour of need. We thank you for the steady lifting of the COVID-19 restrictions and ask for your hand of guidance as the government reviews further measures as the year goes on. We come before your throne of grace to pray for our vicar, Reverend Jeremy and Yi Ping and his family, that you keep them safe and in good health. We also pray for our bishop designate, Reverend Canis, Dr. Titus Chung and his family, and for a smooth consecration and enthronement ceremony on 18th of October. Preserve the health and safety of the families of Reverend Lubin and Reverend Ezra, as well as Pastor Leon and Pastor Jason. Be with Pastor Jason as he undergoes dialysis for his kidney condition. We also pray for a kidney transplant for him as soon as possible. Lord, in your mercy. We thank and praise you for the baptism of the candidates that we saw today. And we think of the rejoicing that is going on in heaven right now as we pray. May your angels guard their lives from this day and guide them as they take their steps along the journey of faith in your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, school exams are upon us and we thank you for the conclusion of the PSLE exams recently. We pray for all who are studying for and sitting for the papers currently. Give them good memory and clarity of mind as they study for and go through the papers. Cover them with your peace when they turn anxious and may they commit every paper and answer to your glory. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks that our physical congregation for coming for service has grown to 100 from today. And we pray that the adherence to safe distancing and wearing of masks during the larger service will motivate and encourage more of our congregations to physically return to church. We pray that more and more people will see the safeguards in place at St. Paul's Church and return to the assembly of the brethren to encourage and edify one another along the path of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, may we come together as we continue to pray. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let us stand as we share the peace with one another. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We share the peace with non-touch gestures. You may sit or kneel at this time as we pray the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. And give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
some uh, announcements for today. We truly praise the Lord for those who have been baptized and also family and friends who are visiting uh, with us. We do thank you for joining us for our service and to encourage the baptism uh, candidates, um, those who have been baptized as they continue to grow and to know and serve the Lord together. Just a reminder that our service will continue at 8.45 uh, in the subsequent weeks. I think some of you may ask, um, yes, it's going to be a longer service. Could we not have stayed at 9 and finished at 10.15? I think the simple reason is that um, discipleship involves sacrifice. And if we stick at 9, it means that it impacts the Chinese and Tamil congregations. They will have to start later. So I felt that um, as the English congregation, discipleship is not an individual thing. We dis- we grow in discipleship as a community. So it means sacrifice. You've got to wake up earlier. You've got to catch your bus or MRT earlier uh, to be here for service. And those who are on live stream, also you've got to, you know, to be earlier. So I, I do hope that you understand. But I thank you. Many of you were yeah, here early uh, to praise and to worship the Lord uh, together. So let us, as we continue to adjust, there may be further changes on coming on, and I think uh, as a congregation, we have uh, adjusted and adapted well, and I thank you for your patience and your love for one another. Okay, next Sunday is the enthronement service, as we've been praying for a new bishop. So next Sunday, 18th October, 4 p.m., is the enthronement service. Again, because of COVID, we cannot be there at the cathedral, but it's on live stream, and in your e-bulletins, you have the link so do um, watch the service, participate in it, and continue to pray for our new uh, bishop, uh, Titus, and his family. Okay, memory verse time, what you've been waiting for, right? So last week, uh, Pastor Leon covered 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, and that was the first time. So I think we need to revise it. So can I have 2 Timothy 2.2 2 on the slide? Yeah, so this is about multiplication. God's called us to discipleship. So let's read it together. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Okay, we can turn it off. Okay, 2 Timothy 2.2. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Well done. So the new memory verse eh, for chapter 3. Basically, each chapter in 2 Timothy is one memory verse. So the first one was 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Then chapter 2 is 2 Timothy 2, 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3. What do you think is the memory verse for 2 Timothy chapter 3? Those who have seen their e-bulletin will know. It's verses 16 and 17. So it's actually memory verses. Eh? But these two verses are together. So can I have the slide for 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17? So you have the whole of this week to memorize this, all right? But let's read it together. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 
Yeah, so men of God and also women of God. Amen? <laughs> Equipped for every good work. So a bit uh, longer, but the Lord will help us, young and old. Let us stand as we praise God together and go forth with His blessing. Lord, we thank you for this service. Pray especially for those who have been baptized. Lord, thank you for their public declaration of their faith in you, their allegiance to you, and their desire to grow in faith. Thank you that, Lord, today is a new day where they have been baptized. And Lord, to be part of this community of faith, help each one, Lord, to be integrated into the life of the church. Pray for, Lord, the love of Christ to be so manifest in this community that they will grow in love for you and in love with one another to serve you. So thank you also for the word. May we be ready, Lord, for these last days, the increase of evil and lawlessness, that we would be your light, Lord, shining the light of the gospel, that this gospel will go forth and nothing will hinder, Lord, we pray, against every attack of the evil one. And may, Lord, each one not be ashamed of the gospel, for it is your power unto salvation. Bless you, Lord. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, we've come to the end of the service. So just a reminder uh, to leave by the back doors, uh, dispose of the Holy Communion plastic cups, and there shouldn't be intermingling between zones. Okay? Thank you. God bless you. Amen.